So hello everyone. We are happy to see you all in our second webinar about the future of accessibility evaluation and, and implementation. In the time that has passed since our last webinar, the global community has been dealing with the coronavirus outbreak. We hope you are all feeling well and keeping safe during these difficult times. Before we start, we want to introduce the accessibility accommodation you can use in the webinar. So we have a real-time real captioning by Verbit. We have the Israeli Sign Language Interpretation by Global Ramp. Hello, Talia visual descriptions of videos and images. The webinar will be recorded for participants and transcription will be sent for participants. But if you have any difficulties, please contact us via the chat. Our speakers at the webinar will be Omer Lubelski, the HEC founder, Anton Eisenberg, HEC co-founder, O. Cohen, Global Ramp CEO, and Louis Mach, Catalysis CEO. I'm proud to invite Omer Lubelski, founder of the HEC application. Hello, everybody. I was here all the time. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, Ohad. Let me just make sure everything here is working. Please stop sharing the screen now. Okay, hi everybody. Okay, hi everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, you thank you, Ohad. Ohad is our senior instructor in HCheck, among other things he does. Um, I'm sure that a lot of you will uh, meet him uh, along the line. <clears throat> I would like to thank again Talia uh, and Global Ramp for giving us. Uh, language interpretation, sign language interpretation, sorry. Um, I would like to thank Verbit again for giving us captioning. If you have, uh, you can just click down and have captions. And I would like to thank Atalisi for giving us visual description um, <clears throat> alongside this webinar. We did the best that whoever wants to participate can participate. And if you have any problems, contact us, just like Ohad said. Um, <clears throat> after I thanked everybody, I really want to thank all of you guys, all of the participants in this webinar. I know during these times of uh, COVID-19, which all of us are isolation and our, uh, our reality is looking uh, a bit bad <laughs> with this pandemic. Uh, and I know it's not easy to be available emotionally and to think about something else. Uh, we all have children, uh, parents, family. So thank you very much for putting everything aside and taking the time to be with us today. Um, especially when we are all in isolation, uh, it's really heartwarming to, to know that we have like this community uh, where we have participants from all over the world. Um, and really, thank you. I know some of you are uh, like in early morning, morning or late at night. Um, so thank you all of you for being here. COVID-19 has a lot of challenges also in the accessibility field, um, publishing data, using the internet in an accessible way. Um, <clears throat> and really, really, um, COVID-19 just made everything about communication via the digital system, okay? Uh, internet, via the internet. So HEC is really important now uh, more than ever because uh, we really need to take uh, care about ourselves and our employees and the users. So we really need to gather the data and put the data in a, digi in a digital cloud uh, and it can be used and open for everybody instead of going over uh, to the site to check and evaluate. All the data will be in a cloud and you can enter it from any place or any phone, tablet or computer um, <clears throat> via a check app. Um, <clears throat> so COVID-19 really changes our reality, um, but we are all from the accessibility community and we know that the human spirit is made to overcome obstacles 
and we just need to adjust to this new reality. Um, <clears throat> Uh, I will be, I, my name is Omer Luberski, I will introduce myself, uh, it's about time. I was born and raised in Israel, I studied architecture in uh, the Polytechnic of Turin in Italy. Um, and uh, uh, we, we launched ACHEC in April 2018, um, two years ago, uh, something like that. Accessibility was always a big part of my life. Uh, my mother is one of the first accessibility consultants in Israel. Um, my wife um, had a stroke at the age of 22 and we had almost two years of rehabilitation um, that was uh, challenging for us. <clears throat> um, my brother-in-law is a Thing Eye Dog trainer um, and um, my father, may he rest in peace, um, passed away a couple of months ago from cancer after uh, almost two years of uh, his health deteriorating and uh, we really needed a lot of uh, accessibility accommodations uh, in all sorts of ways. Uh, so accessibility was always a big part of my life and in 2014 I started working on, in the family company, Tamal Accessibility, um, <clears throat> after finishing architecture in Italy. Uh, and pretty fast we understood um, that we really needed uh, to move to a digital world and have some kind of a digital tool uh, to help us evaluate accessibility levels and really to answer uh, two main questions. One for our customers, uh, which is what do I need to do in order to be accessible? And the second question is for our customers, customers for the end users is how is it accessible for me? because um, each one of us has different needs and each service is different and we really need to understand uh, the complexity of it. Um, after launching in April 2018, um, we really became international and we grew fast. Um, and today we have it in, uh, we have HX system actually in Hebrew, English, Portuguese and Spanish. Um, <clears throat> We have users from all over the world. Um, and the most uh, moving thing uh, for me, the communication of all of the data, um, according to the solution, the accessibility solutions, the regulations in different countries, um, the, the data that we make and share, it's really all of us here together, um, I think uh, contributes a lot. Uh, to making the HX so successful. So, <clears throat> uh, since we launched, we developed the system and we had a, we won a very big contract and we needed to do a accessibility ev evaluation of pedestrians and uh, crossroads uh, in a very big city in the center of Israel. And we needed to even develop more. The, we really needed to develop even more uh, the capabilities of HX, and we developed with Ofic Aerial Photography, um, HX 360 that can communicate with every GI uh, geographic information system uh, and map out everything. Uh, we just uh, got an approval for the pilot, and we're running with it. I'm really proud to share and show you uh, the HX 360 video. During the video, uh, visual description will be. Uh, applied to whoever uh, requested it um, and with no further ado here's our video for the show everything is new to us as well so sorry but here is a video
accessibility surveys today with the technology of tomorrow. Okay, sorry, I understood we had a sound issue during the video. If we'll have time, we'll show it again in the end. I'm um, really sorry about that. Um, we have some kind of technical difficulties. We'll solve them during the, uh, during the continuation of this webinar. For now, I would really want to do a product overview to see how to use ACHIC and how to publish uh, a survey and assessment in ACHIC. Uh, for that reason, I would like to invite our CTO, Anton Eisenberg, which uh, has a very big uh, brain and a very big heart, and it's been really a pleasure working with him all of these years. Um, Anton, uh, it's, your, uh, it's your stage. Yes, hi, Homer. Uh, thank you very much for the kind words. Let me just start my video real quick. Okay, I think you can see me in my virtual office. <laughs> Okay, so I will share my screen. Uh, so again, Omer, thank you very much for the uh, for your kind words. Uh, I have been uh, we've been together with Omer uh, basically since uh, the beginning of this uh, initiative. Uh, I know Omer uh, from university here in Turin. Uh, I still live in Turin already for uh, almost ten years, uh, and uh, ever since uh, two thousand seventeen we started work. And uh, as Omer said. Uh, since 2018, uh, we are online and uh, we are working with uh, uh, with our clients. Um, my uh, responsibility here is uh, to be responsible for everything that is uh, uh, the technical aspect, so the development of the uh, of the web application and uh, of the uh, server that is behind it uh, to maintain the data and to uh, provide the support for uh, our users. Um, so I will just uh, uh, quickly review. Um, how to uh, do a survey uh, in uh, an asset that needs to be accessible. Um, so I will just uh, begin. Uh, so starting from this screen, I have uh, already selected a client and an asset that uh, I would like to uh, to perform the survey in. Um, in this screen, I can see I can basically see the uh, details of the asset. Uh, I can go to the report page and I can see uh, the existing accessibility components that are already here. Uh, in addition, I can also export to different formats, uh, which I will show later. Um, the main thing here is to add a new accessibility component. Um, I do it by clicking this button, then I have this uh, pop-up window that is opening. Uh, the first step would be to uh, select uh, the accessibility component that I would like to survey. So for this example, uh, for example, we can survey uh, an elevator car, just uh, as an example. Then I can see a preview of the uh, uh, accessibility requirements that I will need to answer. So in this case will be the dimensions of the uh, elevator car, uh, the vocal feedback, the height of the buttons and the, the uh, uh, special characteristics of the different buttons. I can see additional information about the uh, accessibility component. Uh, and then I can uh, fill in some additional information. Uh, the only information that is uh, required here uh, is the location of this accessibility components. So I can just put in the lobby and uh, uh, proceed. I can only uh, I can also add uh, some description, some verbal description, but this is not required. I can add uh, some coordinates from the GPS sensor that I have in my uh, device, or uh, if I know from memory all the numbers, then I can also just type it here. And I can also uh, characterize this new uh, accessibility component by uh, a particular uh, group. Uh, with a label and with a color. Uh, this will then be uh, useful when exporting the report. Uh, and finally, I can add a picture uh, of, the, of this accessibility component. So for in, in this example, uh, it would make sense, for example, to add uh, a picture of the uh, elevator car. I will save this component and uh, the next step will be to answer the uh, accessibility requirements that are uh, relevant for this accessibility component. So for example, here, the requirement is uh, to have a, a particular inner dimension uh, of the uh, elevator car, which uh, I, as a surveyor uh, in the field, I should measure. Um, and I can say if it is compliant to what is required or not compliant. So for this example, we can say that it is compliant. Um, then I, I am not uh, requested to add any, any additional text. Uh, in this case, since it's compliant, I will also not uh, add it here. 
and then I can proceed to the next uh, accessibility requirement, which for example is the vocal feedback. So I should check uh, if the elevator car has the expected vo vocal feedback and if it is uh, loud enough. Uh, let's say that it's not relevant, so I can just uh, skip the compliant or not compliant such that the system when saving this uh, the findings that I'm providing now uh, will skip this, so this will not be saved. And I will proceed to the next uh, accessibility finding, which uh, as a shortcut, I can just uh, answer directly from here. So if I know uh, what is exactly the expectation, if I am an experienced uh, surveyor, I can just directly go ahead and add a picture here. This will take me to the usual uh, Windows uh, 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 picture selection. Or if I am doing the survey from a mobile phone, uh, this will take me to my camera such that I can uh, directly take a picture and uh, uh, upload it here. Uh, as an example, I can say that this is not, uh, not compliant. So let's say that the button is too low and here uh, I can provide some additional information. Let's say that I can uh, specify here that the button is only uh, uh, 100 centimeters high. Uh, then uh, I can... Uh, uh, already at this stage of the uh, accessibility survey, I can add some fixes. So for example, I can add a fix here uh, to say that I need to change the height of the button, one unit, and let's say that it costs uh, 100 uh, uh, currencies. I can save it here, close, and check the next requirement. Let's say uh, for this example that also this is not relevant here. Uh, then I can save uh, all the requirements that uh, that I filled here. So only two are relevant, the dimensions and the button height. They were saved. Um, then I can see uh, the result if I go into the report page. The report will show me uh, the summary of all the work that was done on this, uh, on this specific asset. Uh, I have a list here uh, of all, all the uh, accessibility components that were added. Uh, not only today, but also uh, in previous surveys that were done. Uh, for our example, I added this one, elevator car lobby, uh, which is here in the end. And uh, as you can see, uh, the price of the fix that we added was uh, updated here. And I can see also that only one out of two uh, requirements is uh, accessible, which makes in general this accessibility component not uh, compliant. I can then see some additional information about this accessibility component. Uh, Maybe it uh, could be interesting to see exactly what we answered here for the button height. We can see that uh, the button is only 100 centimeters high. And we can also see and adapt uh, the, uh, the fix that needs to be done here. Uh, finally, after I'm uh, finishing editing everything, after I am uh, added the uh, labels and the colors, which here uh, they are relevant because uh, I can group together different accessibility components together by color. Uh, so to provide some sort of uh, logical uh, order between the different accessibility components. Uh, and after I'm done with everything, I can go ahead and export it to a, a PDF document. So we can just leave everything preset, uh, the currency symbol, everything that can be uh, uh, customized here. Then it will take uh, a few seconds. And I have my report, which according to this uh, specific template that we are using, it uses this, uh, uh, these graphics, uh, some uh, short explanation of the, of the asset, uh, its description, uh, of course, a table of contents. Um, executive summary, additional summary, and then we go to list all of the accessibility components and the findings that were uh, uh, done here. So for our example that we just added recently, since we didn't add the picture, uh, it will just look like this. So we have one requirement that is compliant and one requirement which is not compliant. Uh, the color that I mentioned uh, in the beginning, also here, uh, it is evident that uh, it is useful because it paints uh, one side of the page uh, in the color that you chose. So when you print it uh, to present it to your client, uh, it will be very uh, uh, nicely ordered uh, with a logical order uh, between the different accessibility components. So it is convenient for your uh, client. Um, then uh, I Back to the screen, I can uh, continue to do uh, the survey. I can add additional uh, instances, or at the moment that I will uh, finish to do everything, I can go to the report, uh, do some modifications, some edits, and finally uh, finish and uh, publish my uh, survey summary to uh, uh, all the stakeholders of this. 
And uh, that would be all from my side. So Omar, uh, I pass the mic back to you. Omar, if you're speaking, I think you're uh, on mute. Thank you, Anton. Really impressive, like always. <laughs> Thank um, you, you're welcome. Now I want to invite Or Cohen, a Global Ramp CEO, for uh, tell us about uh, his products. Okay, uh, hi, good afternoon everyone. I hope you can uh, see me. Uh, we started uh, with a bit of uh, technical uh, problems, but at least we are on time. So uh, Anton, thank you very much for being on time and uh, uh, providing the, the ability to speak also in my time limits. Um, I'm uh, Orcoin from Global Realm, the CEO of Global Realm. I will just uh, share here my screen. Okay, great. I hope you can all see my screen. Yeah. So, um, first of all, a short introduction of myself. As I mentioned, my name is Or Cohen. I'm an organizational accessibility consultant. Uh, consider myself to be a passionate accessibility advocate. Um, I used to work for six years as the head of the training department at Access Israel NGO. Uh, Access Israel for one of you that are uh, not familiar with this organization is today the leading organization uh, regarding accessibility implementation and promotion, not only in Israel, but also internationally. Um, and about a year ago, I established uh, Global Ramp, uh, that it's an international accessibility consultancy associated along with Access Israel uh, NGO. Um, And in your uh, permission, uh, I will start along with uh, this image. Uh, this uh, beautiful uh, person you can see uh, is my dear dad, uh, Razi, his name. Uh, my dad, uh, as you can probably see, is a person uh, with a mobility disability um, and is a very big influence and inspiration for me in all my work regarding uh, accessibility. And uh, I remember when we just, uh, when I just started to work uh, in the field of accessibility, uh, almost uh, a decade ago, uh, we were discussing about what is accessibility and what is accessibility all about. And uh, I remember my father telling me that accessibility for him is just enable me, just enable me and I'll do the rest. So for me, accessibility is to enable, also to enable for persons with disability uh, to do all the things like every other person independently uh, with respect uh, with all the abilities that are there and also of course to enable organizations and uh, as we can uh, view and observe in the last uh, couple of years uh, we see a world that is progressing towards accessibility uh, towards uh, inclusive environments uh, but still accessibility implementation can be something that is, can be very challenging. It requires sometimes efforts, resources, and then some organizations, especially ones that are big organizations, uh, can find it hard sometimes to implement accessibility in a way that will be efficient, uh, that will be cost-effective, and most important, that will be inclusive. Uh, and for me to enable um, is what, eventually Global Ramp is all about. And as I see it, not only Global Ramp, but also ACHEC is all about, to enable organizations to implement accessibility in the best way possible. And so eventually when we, um, I will just pass on, when we started to build this model of a Global Ramp, we thought about how to enable those organizations to implement accessibility in the best way possible. So you can see here the model that is New slide. the structure of uh, um, Global Ramp. 
Um, you can see here the different solutions we are promoting. Global brand today. associated it's, with uh, It's very bio. important for me also to say that um, has developed a unique consulting and Omer, project. I'm hearing some kind of a, I'm hearing some kind of a voice. Establishing a DNA for accessibility at the organization level. Omar, I can hear some kind of an echo voice. So maybe we need to mute someone. Okay. So, um, as I mentioned, Global Ramp uh, possess um, different solutions. Uh, first of all, it's all the consulting model that we are offering for the organizations we are consulting to. Uh, of course, auditing, that this is probably one of the biggest uh, integrations we have today with the HX, with the HX system. Uh, training solutions that I will show on uh, in a few minutes. Uh, web accessibility technologies and of course inclusive employment that is also part of our organizational agenda and so in consulting we're offering today not only the built environment uh, consultation we're also providing the organizational accessibility consultancy that i will uh, uh, expand a bit wider about it uh, in a second and of course digital accessibility so for us, accessibility implementation in the organizational aspect is something that needs to include all those three different pillars, all those uh, three different elements. And eventually, when we talk about the basic, the platform that accessibility implementation is based upon, we're talking about how to take all the different departments of the organizations, all the different um, duties, all the different uh, aspects of the organizations and bring them together in order to really implement accessibility in an inclusive way. So here you can see, for example, the Department of Legislation, uh, Regulation, HR, of course, it's a very important part of uh, um, this process, the long process of accessibility implementation. And um, of course, all the matter of customer service that we are dealing with quite a lot with the organizations we are consulting with. Uh, procurement and of course as I mentioned uh, digital and IT and it's very important for me to emphasize that when we're talking about accessibility implementation it requires a high level of supervision and management it also requires a high level of maintenance and it's not uh, um, sufficient enough to uh, eventually implement accessibility and to do a mark, to say, okay, I did all these checklists and that's it, the, 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 the process is finished. Eventually, accessibility requires also a lot of maintenance. And for that, uh, I see one of the biggest adv adv advantages, sorry, of the HEG uh, by the dashboard. It enables us as a consultants, as project management, as persons that are in charge of the accessibility implementation inside the organi organization itself. So I, you can see the short passing here. Uh, so here you can see the a normal dashboard of the HX system. Uh, you can see, of course, all the matter of the accessibility rating that for us is something that is crucial. Uh, we want to enable also for ourselves as the project managers, but also to the organization itself, to know exa exactly what's been accomplished and what also needs to be accomplished in the future, in the next future. And uh, also, not less important, is also, also the matter of to who we want to put uh, uh, the biggest priorities in the matter of the accessibility implementation. And um, for example, if I'm an organization that my main target audiences are persons who are blind or visually impaired, maybe in the setting of priorities, I will put more efforts regarding that in the accessibility implementation and also with the work with the HAC app as part of the requirements, the data will implement and et cetera. And as I mentioned also, the matter of auditing is of course the, 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 the main, the, the, the first stop of uh, every process that we are uh, doing regarding accessibility implementation. And there is, different levels of how organizations want to implement during the auditing um, aspects. Uh, there are some organizations that want only the minimum standards and uh, there are some countries that doesn't even have regulation or standards so we need to understand 
uh, what is also the minimum required that we are uh, um, uh, want to, 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 to agree uh, with. So sometimes it's a bit of a negotiating with the organization, especially in places that they don't have a, a structured regulation or, or, a, or standards, sorry. Um, also the matter of uh, organizational culture, uh, the type of service and the uh, organizational DNA is very, very important in the way that we are characterizing the auditing process and the data implementation eventually inside the system when we are starting to work with. It's very important for me to emphasize that auditing is not a checklist. Uh, in many places, I see not only in Israel, but also across the globe, in many places, they uh, um, assuming that the auditing process is like taking uh, uh, different uh, um, um, standards and just you know putting on uh, the checklist and uh, that's it. Auditing for us is something that is um, enables us and also uh, it's an obligation for us to uh, look at it in a more inclusive way, in a more wide way. Uh, and it's something that, as I mentioned earlier, it's something that is long lasting. And one of the uh, main elements that are coming from the auditing process is of course the planning. Uh, we are basing our planning, our implementation plan, the accessibility implementation plan uh, upon the audit itself. And for us, it's uh, one of the abilities to um, also set priorities for ourselves as consultants, but also to reflect to the organization itself uh, what kind of things need to be prioritized first uh, upon others. Sometimes there is a very, um, a very harsh uh, timetable. I can tell you, for example, in Israel today, most of the organizations in Israel were supposed to be already accessible uh, in uh, different aspects, also in the matter of service providing, but also in the matter of built environment. So uh, sometimes you need to reflect as much as possible and to be as much as possible towards the organization about what kind of priorities need to uh, be set and, and to prioritize it all the time. It's very dynamic. So it's something that is also uh, requiring for us sometimes to be very flexible and also to reflect it to the organization itself. And, and uh, I think I was just speaking about flexibility. So I think if I'm looking about the HX system and one of the biggest advantages of the HX system and I will show it in, uh, um, in my next slide about uh, the project we are promoting now with the Chile. It's the matter of customization. Uh, understanding that every organization works differently, every organization providing different services. A municipality is not like IKEA. Uh, it is not like insurance company. It's not like a bank. So the customization here is very, very important. And fortunately for us, the HEC enables us a very wide uh, uh, flexibility and uh, customization towards the organizations we are working with. Uh, also, estimated budget. As we know, sometimes the conception is that accessibility is something that is very expensive. Uh, I'm not agreeing with that. Uh, I think it's only the matter of prioritizing and planning it in the way that will be a, a, and the most suitable uh, and to the budget limits. Uh, but I think that uh, when you're working with a, a tool like the HEC, you have a much more clear aspect on, on how much it will cost you. And also to put it by milestones or uh, different, uh, um, um, different uh, timetables and eventually to enable also us and also for the organization to know, okay, this amount will be uh, taken under consideration for the implementation plan for 2019, 2020. So it's something that is very, very helpful for us. And also, um, also the matter of accessibility coordinators or accessibility conductors. Um, I don't know how much of you are familiar with this term, but uh, in Israel, it's a mandatory by law uh, to mandate a person from the organization itself that he will be the accessibility coordinator. Uh, that it will uh, connect the dots, as we usually say. So for this uh, uh, figure, for this person from the organization, the HEC tool enables him also, as I mentioned, to connect the dots between the different departments and to share the information into, in a way that will be very efficient and very progressive and very dynamic. Uh, it's very important to say. 
Um, and as I was speaking about the accessibility coordinators, so um, the accessibility coordinators is a function that if it's been done uh, rightly, if it's been done in a way that uh, um, will be organized, uh, it can be a huge advantage to the organization. I can tell you that in my last few years, I've been, I, I did training for thousands of different accessibility uh, coordinators. Uh, you can see that in some organizations, the accessibility coordinator is very progressive, has a lot of energy, power, motivation, uh, but not uh, uh, less important uh, when he is working with practical tools and when he's doing the accessibility implementation process in a way that is really um, structured with a tool as the HEC, for example, it's something that can be very beneficial uh, also to the cost effectiveness of the organization. So there is a very strong connection between uh, the two. Uh, the second uh, figure that we're doing training for is uh, something called accessibility survey conductor. Uh, we built a training that is customized to persons from the organization itself, that they will be the accessibility conductors. They will, I can tell you, for example, in a municipality, uh, they have a very big territory. There is a lot of different venues. So this is something that is very valuable to the organization to train uh, persons from the organization itself that can do the accessibility surveys with a tool like the HR, for example. So this is something that we are already integrating inside our accessibility survey uh, conductors uh, course. And last but not least, um, just before I finish, I want to show you um, one of the projects that we are the most, uh, um, uh, that we feel very, uh, uh, um, I'm looking for the right word, uh, very fortunate to be part of, and it's all the matter of the accessibility implementation process going on today in Chile. Uh, Chile today, I can say, is one of the most progressive countries in, the, in Latin America regarding accessibility implementation. They already formed uh, accessibility law in 2015. Uh, the awareness there is quite high compared to uh, at least other countries that I met in uh, Latin America. And uh, in uh, Latin America, exactly a year ago, we started to work uh, in cooperation with the Ciudad Accessible. It's um, the biggest consultancy uh, in Chile and they are consulting to Senadi. Senadi is the National Service of Disability in uh, Chile. And in, two, in 2019, exactly a year ago, we started the process of the accessibility implementation. Uh, it's based, as I mentioned, on the law of DS50 2015. And the, uh, first pilot stage was uh, um, access audits of different 16 ven venues uh, across uh, Santiago and today in the last few months and this is something that I'm very busy with uh, also in this time in this period of the coronavirus uh, it's uh, just improving all the data we already implemented uh, to add additional standards that are upon the law uh, the basic law of uh, uh, Chile uh, all the matter of technical customization is something that we are spending a lot of time and efforts in order to customize the system in the best way for the needs of uh, um, Chile and Senadis, uh, the National Service of uh, Disability. Uh, we were supposed to, I love the date, we were supposed to uh, fly next month in June to uh, Santiago uh, in order to conduct a training for more than 300 accessibility uh, conductors across the country from uh, three different regions. Uh, but, uh, you know, unfortunately, we are all uh, um, confronting with the challenges that uh, the coronavirus uh, crisis is bringing. So at the moment, we delayed it uh, to later on uh, this year. It's supposed to be, I hope so, in uh, uh, September uh, later on. And um, after we were going to finish the training itself, and after we're going to train all those accessibility conductors uh, in 2020, 2021, we are hoping that the HCHEC will become the national tool uh, of uh, uh, making accessibility audits all across the country. This is uh, uh, the agenda, this is the original plan. And uh, I'm sure that even though there is the corona crisis, eventually this will happen as well. And um, 
So as I mentioned, this is uh, uh, being promoted by Senadis, the National Service of Disability in Chile itself. This is only a short example about the way we did the process itself. Uh, one of the things that we've been working quite hardly is to take their uh, um, method of uh, um, uh, rating and their method of uh, providing different percentages to different aspects of uh, accessibility and to do uh, implementation to the HX system. Um, another slide that I will show to the end is a very short part of the uh, Chilean accessibility law. Um, it's a very detailed one. Uh, it's uh, um, the building code, I have to say, it's very impressive. And uh, we took the uh, original accessibility law and did a couple of changes uh, according to uh, um, the needs and requests of Senadis and Siduad uh, Accessible, that those are our partners in this uh, project. For the end, and I know that I'm uh, a bit short of time, but for the end, Jansa will mention six main advantages in managing accessibility with the HEC as I see it. So first of all, accessibility management platform in various levels. Uh, I think that uh, I don't know personally another uh, tool as the HEC that enable you to manage accessibility in such a innovative way, in such progressive way as the HEC. Um, as I mentioned, it enables us to customize it uh, to the organization's needs, to the DNA and the local standards. Um, it's suitable for enterprises, and this is something that is very important at this point, and not a lot of tools today are suitable for big organizations uh, or enterprises or, mun or municipalities. So I think this is one of the biggest advantages of the HX system. Um, comprehensive reports and sharing, uh, the ability to share different reports, different information, different data, is something that I see as a very valuable advantage of the HEC. Cost efficiency, I can tell you that for organizations, it's something that is very important, that eventually uh, accessibility implementation will not cost them uh, more than it's supposed to cost. I think here we have a very uh, an important tool to reflect those organizations how much it will cost and how to eventually be more effective in the matter of costs. And um, the last point, and I, I'm, I'm speaking about that a lot in my lectures, also uh, nationally and also internationally, maintenance. Uh, accessibility implementation is not only on marking the Vs um, across the checklist, but also to uh, keep the accessibility implementation remain for a long term. And this is something that we, the HEC itself, enables us to do in a much more efficient way because it just enables us to track uh, the different uh, um, requirements or the different data that already uh, been uh, um, accomplished and what haven't been accomplished and also to do a review and refreshing regarding the things that we already implemented inside the organization. Okay, I think uh, with that, Thank I'll you. and of course, if you have any further questions, feel free to ask in the Q&A. And thank you once again for our accessibility accommodation for Talia, that I hope that I mentioned her name rightly, and for Verbit for the live captioning. And thank you for listening. Omer. Thank you all. Thank you for everything, for everything you said. Um, it's really a pleasure working with you. And I would like to say to everybody that HEC is not a standalone. It's part of a very big process, like all just described. Um, and it's exactly um, needs to partner with uh, people that give consultancy, with uh, people from regulations, and it's part of a very big process uh, to make a place accessible, as you know. I would like to say sorry um, to all those that uh, use uh, our uh, <coughs> sign language interpreter. We had a problem at the beginning. We will send you the video uh, of the webinar with it. We solved it, and now uh, whoever needs it can watch side by side. So I'm sorry about that. We are having technical issues of our own, um, but usually we have it once. Next time it won't happen again. <clears throat> um, and uh, our first international big project project was uh, in Brazil, and I'm, I'm really proud to uh, invite uh, Luis Mo. Uh, CEO of Kakalisi to talk, um, as well as responsible of the visual description. 
So uh, Luis, if you can publish the link again in the chat room here, uh, whoever would like to try the visual description, uh, please click on the link. Let's give it a try, uh, if possible. Um, and uh, Luis um, made an accessibility plan to make a very big uh, university accessible in uh, Brazil, and, he's, uh, and he did it, of course, uh, with Eche, and he's here to tell you all about it. Um, so, Luis, if you can join us, I'll be glad. Luis? Yeah, we can hear you. Thank you very much, Omar. Uh, okay. Yeah, if you can start your video as well, we can yeah. see you. Yeah, okay. Right okay, now. thank you very much, Luis. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you all for your good explanation, Anton, and Talia for the interpreter, Parvit for the captioning, and Omar, especially you for inviting all this partnership. I'm going to share my screen. I have It's really good to share a little bit about of our experience. So my name is Luis Mausch. I am a founder of Mais Diferenças. That is a no-profit organization. We are running projects in Brazil in the last 17 years. This is we work a lot with the public policy makers in the area of educational and cultural initiative. And also I'm founder of Catalysis. That is a a technology company and we are working with some with some different technologies providing for the market some solutions in this area of accessibility and also i'm a specialist in accessibility and assistive technology and consultant of the itu the united telecommunication union in the region here of the of the americas uh, so in catalysis we are providing some some tools like like hack this partnership we have Play that it's this this technology we are launching this coronavirus time that we are doing our descriptions language and we work with websites we have an application for accessibility and audio guiding museums in Brazil just to have an idea we have 45 million people with some kind of disability. this is the number of our census so this number is and it's around 24 percent of the population so a lot of people we had to face this this uh, uh, this opportunity and have to look for a, a big university campus and our challenge was to make our accessibility uh, diagnosis and analysis and evaluation from this big campus. So just to have here, uh, they have sometimes and uh, they have like 19 buildings and they are around 25 students. Our challenge was first of all to create this valuation level and also bring information to auditing because here in Brazil we have uh, some auditings, uh, not only for the Ministry of Education that obliges that university and schools and all educational places they have accessibility, that a lot of them don't have, but also bring some information to other process they can face it, like the the public ministry and others others uh, regulators. And also the most important was to create an implementation plan that could provide information uh, and prioritize, prioritize all the things that they need to do during the, in a long time. And so we create some phases at the project. Uh, first of all, we work in create this database. We, we take the, the Brazilian regulation, we call ABNT 2015. And I started to work with my my accessibility partner at Tetra. She, she president of the 
permanent commission of the municipality of Sao Paulo. Luis, sorry for interrupting you. We just have some sound difficulties. Um, if you can speak a bit louder and see if all the connections are right, it would be great. Okay, can you hear me right now better? Yeah. Okay. Let's give it a try. Okay, so sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm not at my, at my office because of the corona, so the, the connection is not out the bed. It's not really good. So we create this database using the Brazilian information and we create more than 400 items to check. We test it because it's really important because then go to field and test it how it was. We, we train and create a team. In our team, we use like four different architects and they, they really don't have a lot of experience in accessibility uh, and don't have any access, experience in using HX. So it was really easy to use. And, and also it was good because you create a, a standard using the, the same information. And we, something really important and really good that we could, we could have is to involve the client leadership. So we were working uh, with the, the C-level and they really wanted to change the situation. It was really important to have them close to implementation of the project. Uh, and then after that, we go to field and, and we take like four months, three, three four months to, to check the whole university with 19 buildings. And using uh, also to complement the work, we did a, a survey online with the users to understand what was the most difficult that they got, that they faced uh, each day, not only the students, but also the, the workers and the employees of the university with some kind of disability and it was really important because in the end it could give some information some qualifying information uh, about the priorities that we are wanting to to implement at the project uh, after that we, we create the reports everything using a check and it was really easy to to go to field to create the reports to change wherever you want to um, and always, and we did like a database integration because we always had this view that for uh, big companies or for uh, municipalities or public uh, policy makers, it's really important if we got the whole vision because sometimes you just have the vision and the situation of one building of one part of the the accessibility and not the whole uh, vision. So. It was really important to integrate this database and we work with some data analysis as well in creating some BI's technologies and BI's reports. And after that, uh, with the research, with the, the architectures and the team, we create some priorities because they are a really huge company, so they have a lot of things to, to change in these the next years. So, uh, after that, we create this implementation plan and then we went for uh, work with consulting and helping them to implement these priorities. Just to have an idea about the data, what we were trying to do. Here we got each building, the situation of each building, so uh, we could face what was the priority building at the campus. After that, we create uh, these items we could have how many items we could do uh, like access like content like uh, parkings all the that, that, that items that we are not uh, and after that we create some priority buildings that was the building that mostly we were using and we take some priority items as well because yeah, we were talking about almost 6,000 things that we need to change in this university. You know, all through or, or whatever. So the priorities that we choose was vertical circulation, it was parking, it was rooms, uh, and also the accessible toilet, because not only the Brazilian legislation that this is the, the priority thing to do, but also it was the need that we realized with the research of things that we, we did. And also uh, the second priorities was access, 
front of circulation, ramps, signaling, and stairs. Uh, and it's important to say that in this project, we focus more in the architectural and the physical barriers that the community are facing. And, and right now, we, we're planning other things to implement in, in this. Great. Nice. Next steps. Uh, okay, go for it. We just need to uh, finish in a bit because uh, we're getting near to six. Sorry that it falls on you. Um, okay, so we are trying to implement, especially in other big companies and also in other public. Okay, ah, well, uh, it was a, a bit early, but thank you very much, Luis. Uh, we had a bit of uh, sound interference. I just want to say that Luis did an amazing job and uh, the university had accessibility plan according to uh, um, kinds of accessibility about the urgency of uh, different, different accessibility components. Um, <clears throat> if you can please stop sharing your screen, uh, Luis. So, thank you, Omar. It was really great working with uh, Luis and he took all of the data from uh, ACHEC and really knew how to present it in a great way. And, and to say the truth, we learned a lot from him. Uh, so thank you very much for, for all that uh, process. If anybody wants to know a bit more about what's going on in Brazil and the, um, and the services and it, uh, the things that Luis is doing, uh, you're welcome to contact him. Um, <clears throat> before we finish, first of all, we had a problem with the sound and the HX 360 video. So we fixed everything. So I'm proud to finish with the video. Um, and then after we see the video, we will uh, conclude. Uh, Iran, um, I will thank you and of course you will uh, talk and uh, explain a bit about the uh, verbiage and the solution. Uh, but without any further ado, here's our new video of HX 360 uh, that shows our new system with the new capabilities. Okay, I'm sorry we didn't fix the problem. Um, I'm really sorry. We do have another option to show the video. And I'm doing it the second. I'm sorry, everybody, for that you need to wait. Okay, I'm sorry everybody, we thought we solved the problem, but we didn't. Um, we will send you in mail uh, the video so you can see it along with uh, other information uh, regarding this webinar. Um, <clears throat> anyway, um, <clears throat> thank you everybody for participating. Um, now we've got the time for um, questions and answers. I will, uh, all the panelists will be here and available for you to uh, ask questions and everybody will participate. Um, <clears throat> but as we said at the beginning, COVID-19 really has a lot of uh, new challenges for us in the accessibility field and uh, everybody is now using Zoom and um, captions is something that everybody needs. And we have with us Iran from Verbit 
that can explain exactly how they're, how they're doing it. So, uh, Iran. Yes, thank you. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, great, thanks. We can hear you and see you. Perfect. So, uh, first of all, thanks, Homer, for inviting me to take part in this interesting and valuable webinar. My name is Aaron Fischer. I'm the head of customer success at Verbit. So Verbit is a technology-based voice-to-text platform that employs a combination of AI technology with a large team of human transcribers to help businesses and organizations to efficiently caption all the audio and video content to make it accessible for their recipients who require accessible content and for enabling inclusivity to make the accessible content available and usable to the entire population. And as Ovra mentioned, especially these days with the increased need to work remotely in the wake of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, our integration with the live video conferencing, such as Zoom, as we see this webinar, GoToMeeting, BlueJeans, WebEx team becomes even more essential. As you can see in this webinar, our integration with Zoom supports captions and transcription within the video conferencing tool, which can be used for meetings, broadcasts, and can be helped to provide a record of webinars or interviews to meet accessibility needs of all participants. So we, Verbit as a company, we are highly dedicated to helping institutions and organizations to drive accessibility, to fulfill the learning needs of all individuals. And as such, Verbit provides both post-production, also known as offline captions, and live captions uh, services to work directly with video conferences application in order to make the captions available at all times to all participants for any online and offline digital content. I can say that uh, today's session is fully captioned. We have a combination of machine and humans and will be available afterwards. And we're very fortunate to have this opportunity to cooperate here. And thanks again, Omer, for letting us participate in this webinar. And thank you all for participating. Thank you, Iran, and thank you for the great job you're doing. Um, you're, a lot, you're very modest, not uh, thanks to all the people you are working with and supplying your uh, services. Um, but they're doing an amazing job. I'm now um, putting everybody on the panel and we'll start answering the questions. Um, <clears throat> Luis, are you able to connect with us? Yes, hello. Great, hello. Anton, are you here? Oh. Yep, I'm here. I'm here Great. as well. Everybody is here, yes. we can see everybody. Yeah. And we will start answering the questions. Uh, first of all, I see we have a question about the reports, um, if the final customer gets a report. A report is something you can publish out of the system. You can publish your report from inside of ACheck in any given time, and it will give you a report according to the time it's published. You can publish it in a PDF format, you can publish it in a Word format, and you can publish it in an Excel sheet. Uh, and each publication is for different specific reasons. Let's say the PDF uh, booklet is to instruct everybody in the field what's not okay, what needs to be done, how much it's going to cost. Um, <clears throat> the Excel sheet is good also for uh, geographic information systems and as well to get uh, all kinds of um, amounts and costs uh, and do all kinds of uh, data analyzing. Um, so you can do it with that. And the Word, Word uh, booklet, of course, is something open that you can add and edit uh, and, um, <clears throat> and give it to your, to your client as you want. Uh, of course, once you publish from a check, each, each user can publish it with his template. I mean, it's not like uh, every publication will have a check but every publication will have its own logo and uh, signage and everything. Would anybody would like to add anything? Um, one second, Omar, checking here for uh, further questions from the um, application uh, form that uh, we, we got. So, I see here that there was people interested about how the system can uh, promote projects regarding uh, accessibility in tourism, for example. Um, or can you maybe provide any example from your experience about how the A check can contribute to accessibility implementation in the tourism field? Yeah, I would be happy. Um, 
first of all, if we take Israel as an example, um, uh, first of all, the tourist field is a very important field to be accessibility, to be accessible uh, and inclusive. Of course, um, we need to have the ability to uh, get our needs also out of home uh, when we are on vacations. When we check, let's say, in a hotel room, um, so we need to understand, first of all, um, what the regulations that the hotel room needs to stand in. And if there's a, it's a complex question because it depends when it was built and how many rooms it has inside and all those, those, those things. So HX knows how to uh, ask his uh, questions and um, define the asset according to the relevant regulations. And then when you start the survey, um, all the items that will appear will be according to the relevant regulations. And once you do a full report on a hotel, let's say, um, you can understand not only what you need to do in order for it to be accessible, but if you can do, continue doing the surveys and maintenance and monitoring the accessibility inside of the hotel, you can also understand all of the accessibility components through the system and the, understand how it's accessible for who, because it's not the same thing having the, an accessible uh, way into the pool and having a hearing aid. It's completely two different needs. And the end user, uh, most of the time, needs to know his specific needs. So we can analyze it and publish the data however we want. Uh, so the customer or uh, the accessibility and whoever is res responsible on the accessibility in the hotel, uh, let's say, has a tool to ensure the accessibility and to publish to the hotel customers what's accessible, how? Uh, Omer, and then I will uh, just add in uh, your permission, and um, I think, you know, hotels is a great example for that, and I'm not sure how much I emphasize it in my presentation because I didn't have enough time to do so. Um, but all the matter of, of course, you know, we are all used to access audits in the built environment. We are very used to access audits in the digital accessibility aspects. But I think hotels and tourism is also a great example of access audit in the service providing or in the organizational aspects. For example, a chain of hotels, they have a lot of procedures need to be taken care of. And uh, they have a lot of training they are doing to their different uh, service providers. Uh, they have a lot of different departments, marketing, for example. How are you ensuring that uh, all the marketing materials and all the publishments are fully accessible towards the target audience? So I also want to emphasize the fact that the HEC can be also a magnificent tool also to measure the aspects of the service providing, also to measure the aspects of the organizational accessibility elements. And I think tourism is one of the biggest examples for that. Of course, as I mentioned before, if we are talking about municipalities, so there is a lot, there is tons of different organ organizational aspects need to be taken care of. And, uh, and I think the HEC and, and, you know, we are already used to it from Israel. I think the HEC is a great way to evaluate also the service providing and the services, the accessibility of services, and not only the built environment or the digital accessibility. I think this is something that we, is very important to emphasize towards our um, participants that I think I agree. Uh, yeah, that I think eventually it can be a magnificent tool to uh, evaluate all the different aspects of uh, uh, the organization. Great, yeah, thank you. Uh, I agree, I fully agree. I just want to say uh, to the last question we have here uh, about the accessibility accommodations we have during the webinar, um, you are free to uh, communicate to each one of us uh, we will provide you information also about interpretation into sign languages, um, about uh, captioning, and about the visual description. Um, of course, all of this, all of this is available uh, in our team, as you can see. Um, and that's all. I really want to thank everybody. Sorry for taking you not only an hour, but an hour and 15 minutes. Um, <clears throat> we had difficulties. We are promising to uh, make better uh, next time, um, but it was a, a great pleasure. Uh, and I wanna thank all of you for participating. Uh, if, and when you, under the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, HEC is more important than ever. 
And I just want to ask all of you to keep safe and healthy and take care of everybody. We should continue and take care of the accessibility. It's more important than ever. It's not like the Spanish flu 100 years ago. Today we have a lot of other capabilities and we can take care of all of the human society. Uh, doesn't matter um, gender, race, ability, we can do it. We just need to keep our heads up and working towards a solution. Uh, so thank you for being here uh, and we'll communicate everything. We will send you the webinar with the captioning and all the information added. You are uh, free to contact us whenever you want. Thank you everybody for the second webinar of Ajax. Thank you. Thank you very much.